ancestors, please open the womb of our mind, the womb of our heart, and the womb of our sacred seat. Hello and welcome to the Sacred Sister Circle, the very first Sacred Sister Circle of 2020. I am so excited to say those words again. It feels like it's been so long. Um, and I'm also excited for the new structure of the Sacred Sister Circle. You'll notice it's a little different. And in fact, I have a feeling this year's is going to be different from next year's as well, because this year we're going to be making our Sanab Freedom Shawl. So um, I'm going to be going into some serious depth about that today. Um, I'll also make another separate video on that, just so that I, I've noticed certain videos, certain titles will pick up certain things, so we're going to just go with that. So keep your eye out for either of those videos if you need even more information. I'm going to be, you know, going all in on all of that. So um, before I start, though, I did want to suggest some reading, some personal reading for people this year, um, you know, who are just continuing their journey, who... Um, are just starting their journey, wherever you are, um, this is a quick talk for you. Sorry, I'm so close to the window. I'm trying to get some of that natural light something. Anyways, of course, first book I always recommend, Sacred Woman, Going Through It Again, if you've only been through it once, going through it for the first time. You know, we have all of those videos from the last year, and in fact, if you're on Patreon, you can see the ones from the year even before that. Those ones are kind of a mess, just because I kind of just didn't know what I, I was, you know, going for completely. It was just at the whim of whenever my kids were even really younger at that time, I was kind of even more of a mess. Anyways, apologies for the mess that those videos are. They're pretty long. But I mean, if you have nothing better to do and you would like to go through them and find, you know, some dancing. I used to do full moon and new moon dancing. I had a backyard at the time and um, had some fun dancing in the rain with y'all. Um, but um, yeah, you can go ahead and look through that. Take it through as slowly as you'd like. Maybe um, go through it in a different way than you've gone before. Maybe this year you're going to only work on three or four things from the, the Sacred Woman text. Um, whatever you desire, you know, you have those resources available to you. Um, I also put up a copy for on the Patreon. All you have to do is pay $1, uh, donate that $1 for the month, and you'll be able to access everything that I've ever really put up there. Um, you know, and you can find Sisters of the Yam in the free books section. There's like a books tag, um, and, and I put up PDFs, and so there's a PDF of that, Sisters of the Yam, and I think that book, could be a very powerful tool and we might be doing that one next year as a circle but I, I was like I have a lot on my plate as it is I'm not sure I can go through a book with everybody this year hopefully by next year we'll have enough donations that I can pay somebody else to come on and help me um, make some of the content um, make some of the you know talks and prayers yoga maybe if I had somebody doing all the sacred movement that would be really amazing um I also wanted to suggest my workbook, Punani Proverbs, that will have you give you something to, to play around with and enjoy um, on your own. And, um, you know, it's available on Amazon. I have other workbooks also. Um, you can look up my name, Tatami Soro, X-E-R-O, or you can just look up Womb Healing Workbooks. They should all come up under that. Um, and finally... Of course, telling you again that this is free. The PDF and the e-file, the EPUB file are free on um, ritualready.com. And you can also find Spiritual Planner, uh, Spiritual Black Girls on Amazon as well. And so um, you can get the paperback version, which is always really nice because that is what I'm going to be pulling out to show you. Hopefully you can see it. Oh my goodness. I drew so light in like pencil. <laughs> but um, I have my plans for my square kind of coming to fruition. You can kind of see it. I hope it's going to turn out all right in the video. Goodness. Anyway, um, I have I have some triangles. I, I'm not sure if I'm going to put a body behind them. Um 
you know, oh, I'm just so, you know, confused, but I'm going to color this up and put it on Patreon. I'm also going to be um, talking to you about um, what the book says about the Sanab Freedom um, Project. And, you know, kind of how we're going to be making it our own. But first, really quick, because I was a little late, I wanted to explain myself. This is my first book published. Look at this. This is Apricity and um, Nomadic Press. It's a local um, Oakland um, book publishing company um, who, you know, looks for people who may not usually be represented to publish their stories. Um, read my book last year and you know if I I didn't even really take it that seriously at first I was like oh this is there's something is not gonna work out with this but lo and behold I went to my own book premiere I'm holding my, a copy of my book in my hand it's amazing and um, I'm so excited about that and I also am so excited because there was, this is what everybody else's book looked like, by the way. This is my book, and this is what the other authors typically, maybe twice this, but nobody's book was as hefty. <laughs> Mine was a very thick, thick lady. So um, I was so excited because this um, Afro-Indigenous gentleman had, um, he was also a published author that night, and he did not make it there, but he did... Um, he did have a, a video sent in, and oh, he had a poem in here about the ancestors mourning, mourning the loss, um, the connection. I'm going to read it to you all, uh, not this time, but next Monday, and um, I highly encourage you. I haven't even read his whole book. And just from that one poem alone, I was driven to get a copy, and I highly encourage you to get your hands on a copy as well. Um, because, wow, yeah, what a treat. What a treat, right? Um, uh, it was just so good. I also want to mention, isn't it amazing how, um, you know, all the books look like they kind of go together? <laughs> Isn't that cool? So when you collect books from this company, you know, they all, it's like a rainbow. You're, collect, you're collecting something that looks like um, aesthetically pleasing when you line them all together. Anyways, I've never seen that before with a, a publishing company. You know, they, it's usually all, it's like, it's red. It's It's got this little penguin. That's what it is, you know, but this is just so pretty. So I'm so excited that my book is a part of that community um and my little different little details oh, this is such an amazing thing so let's go on let's move on let's stop talking about me 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 okay of course i've lost my page all right so i'm on page 31 of the sacred woman text if you happen to have this book um if not Never fear, I will be reading this all out loud right now. I will also finally take some pictures of this and put it up on Patreon so that you will have the actual text of the word. So even if you don't want to be, but you like, you're like, I put it away for the year uh, to Tommy. I decided I didn't want to <laughs> be doing all that. I decided I want to take a break for this year. Totally understandable. I will be putting up the picture on Patreon so that you can take a little break this year and keep your book on the shelf collecting dust as is tradition, right? With everybody's text. Um, so let's see. So this is a uh, number 14. This is supposed to be a project that you do in conjunction with the gateways. But if you've done the gateways, you know, it's a lot. And to think about also sewing on top of that is mind boggling. So, um, so here's a little bit of tedious work. We're not so tedious if you're going to be using, 
Um, well, I mean, it's going to be kind of, it's going to be piecing things together, whether you use your sewing machine or not, but you know, I'm going to be trying to, I'm going to be likely using, should I say a combination of both. So we're going to read here. She says, um, choose the sacred cloth that will serve as the canvas for your spiritual garment. Oh, look at that. She, I think she might be saying like, get or uh, make a shawl and then you're going to be putting the shawl pieces on top of that. Like, like patchwork or, you know, style them however you would like on top of that. That's a very interesting, I've, I've never read it that way before, but I don't know. Yeah, she says, this cloth serves as the backdrop on which you create your Sinab Freedom Shawl or quilt. Okay, so here's my suggestion for that then. Um, you can make that, maybe make it, you know, with a basic, um, you know, design you see on YouTube or with a shawl you already have, um, or... Um, buy the item that you're going to cover, buy a plain, long, huge, long scarf, maybe get, make a long piece of cloth if that's what your project's going to be, maybe, um, get a jacket, a denim jacket, or a, you know, a different kind of jacket that allows for patchwork type of things to be sewn onto it, um, I'm sure a lot, like a lot of longer coats or, you know, those are made of a thick enough material you could, um, you know, like a suede or a velvet coat might work for that. Maybe get creative with that, you know, stick really with your own style. But, um, you know, she's saying here that you're going to be making patch patches that go on to which I had already been thinking was going to be an easier project to do. So I'm, that's why I'm like surprised to see it. I'm like, oh, this is a lot easier than I had originally thought this project was. So um, you'll begin preparing the sewing materials you'll need to continue your Sanab quilt or shawl or jacket or scarf um, work throughout the nine gateways of initiation. So this is just the very beginning little thing, but the real the real juice of it all is on page 127. So let's skip all up there. This part I'm a little more familiar with. We'll see. All right. So honoring the tradition of working cloth together is a reflection of our growth into our sacredness as liberated, empowered women. Another name for such a cloth is Sinab, the Metu Ntur, comedic word for health. For this shawl represents everything that is healthy and whole within a woman. It can be a shawl, a quilt, a blanket, a robe, a drape, a wall hanging, a piece of art. The cloth represents gateway zero, the sacred womb, and then all the nine gateways of initiation. Gold thread we use to sew these pieces of cloth as we make our journeys through the gateways ties together the lessons of what each of the gateways offers to us. So she's suggesting that I, we get gold thread to be sewing on all of these different things. Or I would suggest if that sounds, because I could probably start adding up, like you have a, probably a bunch of threads at home, um, but using the gold to stitch it onto... Um, using the gold to stitch onto the item, the scarf, the quilt, the backdrop, whatever you're using, the tapestry, um, could be really helpful too. So let's see. So on page 127, we are at a part called creating the sacred woman's freedom shawl. As you prepare to enter gateway one, undertake the following ritual project. Our grandmothers and great-grandmothers made quilts in a private mind, heart, and hand meditation, or in a circle of women, friends, and relatives. But it was always a woman's ritual. Making these quilts took pieces of cloth of different patterns and colors and unified them into one tapestry. Each piece was perfectly measured and sewn together in meditation or over interesting conversations that created a spirit of togetherness and joy and laughter. Such quilts became monuments to our history. Today, quilts of unity become garments of freedom for sacred women that can be worn as shawls placed over your bed to protect you as you make your spiritual journey. Since ancient times, the Working of cloth has been used not only for clothing and cover, but also to mark special occasions or to announce information. 
Cloth art, like clothing, provided a fine place for social messages. It has also been used as a monomic device to record events or other data. Two, it was used to invoke magic, to protect, to secure fertility and riches, to divine the future. The spinning, weaving, and wrapping of a cloth by women in an ancient practice is an ancient practice dating back to our comedic origins as early as the 4th millennium BCE. The women typically sat on low stools on the floor to spin. The loom was pegged out to the ground and two weavers squatted on either side, moving the shuttle back and forth. As we sacred women in the making work our own cloth, we are stitching ourselves into the tapestry of liberation and healing ourselves with each thread we spin and each piece of cloth we sew. As we embrace new pieces of consciousness, in our entry to each gateway, we are gathering ourselves into a cloth of unity. All right, so we are going to now get into the more nitty gritty of sewing your freedom shawl or quilt. Honoring the tradition of working cloth together is a reflection of our growth into our sacredness as liberated, empowering, empowered women. Another name for such a cloth is sinab, the metu ntur, comedic word for health, for this shawl represents everything that is healthy and whole within a woman. It can be a shawl, a quilt, a blanket, a robe, a drape, or a wall hanging, a piece of art. The cloth represents gateway zero, the sacred womb, and all the nine gateways of initiation. The gold thread we use to sew these pieces of cloth as we make our journeys through the gateways ties together the lessons of what each gateway offers to us. Um, so I would suggest getting, you know, one thing of gold and using it to sew the patches onto the big backdrop, be it, you know, the shawl, the quilt, what have you, and or, you know, a jacket, scarf whatever or you know you could use gold for the whole thing if that's if that's what you like though I um you know just try and make sure you get one that's nice enough to work with you know really look at their reviews to make sure you're not getting something that's gonna fray or be difficult and frustrating for you um we will sew together the pieces of cloth that embody our wisdom hope visions, prayers, rest, joy, as we mend the fabric of ourselves and our lives from one gateway to the next. Into our sanab, we incorporate all that we have learned from studying and mastering our lessons, building upon the knowledge of our sacred circle, receiving and sharing all that is needed to become a sacred woman. Our sacred quilt or shawl is composed of 10 pieces of cloth. It will be a design of beautiful, enlightening, life-giving life colors that represent our hard-won wisdom. During our initiatory journey through Sacred Woman, we keep weaving or sewing together the various pieces representing the stages of our development as a whole woman. When we are done, we will have a quilt or shawl that will keep us warm from the cold, and we will spread over our life to protect and to comfort us in spirit when needed. It will soothe us when healing is taking place, shield us when it's too hot in life's kitchen and wrap around us like a skirt to bring out our regal beauty. We drape it over our shoulders as a shawl when calling for strength to take care of the serious business at hand. We wear it as we walk the land or place it around our shoulders as we go to and fro in the world, or rested at the edge of our bed when we need to contemplate what direction to take next. These ten pieces of sacred cloth are all born out of and inspired by the wombs of the First Mothers. Once each piece is joined to another throughout the gathering of our sacred selves, a rich and colorful, color-filled tapestry will emerge, a legacy of our true womanhood for all times. And we may pass this cloth on to our daughters as a powerful legacy for them, just as our first mothers passed on the legacy of the original sacred woman to all other women seeking wholeness. 
Um, so I hope your, your wheels are really churning in your head. Um, you know, what are you going to use? What are you going to make? Um, is it going to be a shawl? Is it going to be a scarf? Is it going to be a wall hanging to put over your bed? Maybe like as a headboard, um, maybe to have something that is decorative to lay over the top of your blanket when you finish making your bed in the morning, um, something to sleep under. Um, it can even be, you know, like a pillowcase or, you know, some other item that you can keep in your bedroom or close to you in some way, um, or, you know, somewhere else sacred in your home that you would really like to keep this type of thing. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know. There's just so many possibilities. And of course, sewing isn't the only one, but that is what we're talking about in this one. But obviously, use whatever skills that you have to create something um, with your, your skill set that is artistic and symbolic and can be used around yourself and your home um, to ins continue to inspire you in your journey. All right, we're on page 128, and we're at the section talking about making the prayer shawl, making the quilt, um, etc. So um, this is the last bit of advice from Queen specifically on this. She says, as you enter Gateway Zero, you may receive the Ost Nebit Het Sister to Sister Shawl. You don't have to wait until the end of your initiation to wear this shawl. You may pray with the shawl, wear it particularly during your morning and evening prayers and purification rituals. Wear your shawl during your studies in sacred womanhood. Um, so I, I think she means in this case it was like a, a gift. But in this case also, if your shawl is not um, ready, I would also suggest praying over it, using it throughout this year, even as it's not completely ready yet. Um, or find a, you know, somebody to, to exchange with that might be very beautiful. As you approach each gateway, anoint your shawl with particular essential oil of that gate. You can also use the Os Nebit Het shawl to support yourself through your gateways as you work on creating your woman-made freedom shawl or quilt. Um, so making your freedom shawl or quilt. Here we go. Step one, mind. Become familiar with the sacred woman text. So if you've been with me for the last year or even the last two years, some of you, um, you're familiar, right? You know, you, you kind of know what each gateway embodies. And with that knowledge, you can start thinking symbolically about, you know, translating that to a fabric square. Um, Read each gateway. Be ready to apply what you're learning as a sacred woman to the preparation of your freedom shawl. Observe what signs and symbols appear in your life. Reflect on how these symbols represent what you and your shawl will become. As you sew, meditate on this ritual as a means of gathering all the pieces of your woman self together into one beautiful unified tapestry. Visualize thoughts of wellness into your life. Stitch them and your highest vision of yourself into your design. Step three, the body. Collect swatches of cloth using the 10 colors symbolic of each gateway. Listed in the spiritual observances for the nine gateways chart. See pages 136 to 137. We'll go there in a minute. In each gateway, you will complete sewing a swatch every seventh day um and keep in mind that you know you can do the colors but then you can also you know feel free to expand if you want your your quilt or your shawl to only be you know two or three colors and you know push yourself with those you know do what you want to do um this is your 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 uh shawl this is something that's going to make you feel powerful um in each gateway you'll you will complete sewing a swatch every seventh day. Goodness, you know, it's such a rigorous when you... <laughs> I can't even imagine doing that all in seven days. Anyway, um, remember to put gateway zero in the center and to let the nine gateways surround your sacred womb. Oh, that's very a very wise setup. So um, even if you're using, you know, a scarf, a jacket, a what have you, um, make sure you put that... Um, sacred womb in the center and um, you're able to then you know 
put the other ones around your, your sacred womb patch, right? Um, the last thread will be sewn as you, the sacred woman in the making, are about to leave that particular gateway. The process continues at the beginning and ending of each subsequent gateway. This is the ritual of beginnings and endings, linking one piece of cloth, one piece of self, to the whole by hand and by spirit. After you've finished sewing the pieces of your shawl together, sew a white, blue, or silver strip of cloth completely around the edges of the quilt or shawl as a border. You may then choose to applique a patch of silver or blue cloth on one or all of the gateways to represent the overarching divine spirit of Newt, or our heavenly celestial mother. As a sacred artist, feel free to paint stars on your shawl as well. Oh, paint. Y'all, this can get really creative and really beautiful, and I'm really hoping some of you do this with me so that I can see other people's projects at the end of this year. That will be really amazing. Um... So she continues. Now, this part that she's saying, remember when I, my video, um, Queen's Journey is not your journey. So she, you're hearing how each of these are so symbolic, how they mean something. They mean something to her comedically. They mean something to her spiritually, ancestrally, traditionally. That is the type of thought you are putting into this project. That is the type of energy. Um, so, you know, for me, this next part where she's talking about from the silver or blue cloth, Cut out the shape of the throne, the seat of Os, Isis, and then applique this symbol of Os onto the very center of your shawl or quilt. Um, you know, that's not something I'll be doing just because, you know, Os, Isis. These just aren't goddesses that I participate, you know, in or with. Um, so I wouldn't put them on my shawl. But, you know, um, instead of this, you might consider... Um, making a version of the crossroads, right? Just an even e a plus type of sign to be the crossroads or an X to be the crossroads. Um, you know, you can put, you know, a candle, maybe paint or so candles, stars, um, different star constellations that mean something to us as black people or to you specifically. Um, you know, finding those different ways to honor your ancestors to honor your spiritual practice whatever that may be at this time and that may be putting a certain item on the on the item uh, on your your project you know nine times or seven times or three times or you know a specific number to, that represents something in the tradition that you're practicing now that isn't necessarily comedic or isis ost based so she continues um, and I'll note, she says, applique. This is very, um, this is, you know, this this is reminding you that, that this doesn't just have to be like little pieces of patchwork, which it totally can be. I think that would be very creative, very beautiful. I saw somebody who did, I swear, patchwork of the Michelle Obama official portrait. And I was like stunned to look at that quilt and all the tiny little pieces she did, breaking it down into tiny little, you know, little squares placed all around to remake this portrait just amazing so she says also cut, cut out the lotus from white cloth so that above the seat of us so a lotus would be very beautiful so would a rose so would um I, a poppy i love poppies right uh find a flower that talks to you and um represents something to you i know the lotus is like starting in the mud and blossoming out um, but you know, there's, there's so many other flowers that mean so many other things, either to you personally, so many other plants that mean something to people personally that I, um, I just highly suggest that you, um, find a, find a way to really express yourself to really, um, to, to really, yeah, express yourself personally in this project uh, to your own spiritual needs, to your own. Um, so she says, since there's no limitation to your creativity, you may now also want to sew or glue sacred stones that correspond to each gateway onto your shawl or into your shawl. 
um, you know, find those little ways to make it sacred. Use your own or ooh, I y'all maybe make a mojo bag that is sewn onto this shawl, sewn into, you know, sew it onto a plit part of the shawl that's or the the jacket, the shawl, the scarf, like maybe into the corner. Keep it small and light. You know, maybe just a high john root and some oils and a little bit of herbs or something you know in a crystal keep it really small and light if it's if it's something like a shawl or a scarf but yeah put it sew a mojo bag on there if it's a quilt i i always sew a little patch on like um blankets i make and stuff to to stuff something in there um you know stuff a coin in there maybe some pennies um some some mercury dimes something like that um be creative, be creative. So let your, let your cloth speak of your sacred life. Can't say it any better, queen. Um, so she says, oh, also you could choose to paint your images of yourself, your guardians, your ancestors, your elders of your choice so on your cloth, on the inside. Remember there's two sides to this, make it dual sided. I don't even know the, the possibilities are endless. This is about to be a very fun year. I'm so excited to show, uh, to start and to show you all something too. So she says, mounting your collective freedom quilt. This is There is a third project you might want to undertake. Collectively, the women who are studying and becoming initiated as sacred women may choose to make a freedom quilt together to symbolize the unity of their sacred woman's circle. Oh, that's so beautiful. Um, so if you are doing a sister circle with somebody else, um, you, you can choose to make a quilt together. If you can get a group of you together, uh, I hope someday, someday that this group can do something like that and have everybody send in a square and make a quilt that is, you know, representative of this movement that we've been doing. Because there's always, at all times, there's always about 50 of us following along with the circle at any given month. Um, and sometimes the people who are in it change, but there's always about 50 of us. Never forget that, that there, uh, there's never really been in a long time. There hasn't been lower than 50 of us uh, at a time following this journey, following the videos on Patreon. At least that's that's how I'm counting them. And uh, there's more, obviously, with views, but I, I'm just not sure how many of those are consistent viewers. Um but yeah, it's 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 a possibility in our future of making an extra uh, extra square, and then if there's ten of you, that's a whole quilt at easy, you know, um, or that's you know a shawl, a mantle of some sort. Oh, it's so beautiful, I love it. Um, so the display keeps the history of your sacred woman clan ever visible. It may encourage other sister initiates to also do likewise. Um, I'd be so impressed if you ever do that, please send me a picture of everybody's squares all together. How precious. Um, so let's see. Oh, and then this one, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see in this dark light, but she has definitely a, a quilt here with pictures, printed pictures onto cloth then put onto this quilt they've got an onk they've got some beautiful fabrics um that have and then they've also um applicated different symbols of uh, hieroglyphic symbols that have different meanings as well here at the bottom very beautiful just yeah just amazing they've also cut out some um the heads of some goddess of or another i'm not sure who that's supposed to be Maybe that's Oster Isis, just the head, and then we've got some shells sewn on, uh, just lovely, good, beautiful, um, little, you know, details. All right, so that was all that Queen says about it. Um, let me get out my notes now <laughs> for this. Oh, do you know what? To I had meant to. Um, where was I? All right, so I had wanted to just read the very first paragraph of this Gateway Zero Sacred Womb just to get you feeling, you know, in the, um, you know, feel, feeling your understanding of the, um, 
you know, what what's expected of you this month with this, like, give you some inspiration, you know what I'm saying? Not what's expected, but give you some inspiration for Gateway Zero, Sacred Womb. So she says, the Sacred Womb is the gateway to all the gateways. Each gateway represents a spiritual exer exercise of ascension. The practices offered for Gateway Zero, the Sacred Womb, are for disciplining yourself to honor this path which will awaken your inner gateways of divinity so that you may blossom and establish your full sacred center. The sacred womb lays the foundation of womb wellness that serves as your preparation for the nine gateways. Gateway, we present to our womb the gift of wellness philosophy. This includes the natural living approach to food, womb rejuvenation techniques, womb affirmations, womb meditations for total attunement. Um, so yeah, that's about, that's all I wanted to read. Just a short blurb that got you, your mind thinking about the sacred womb. Um, so what I wanted to, um, you know, su suggest for this one is, you know, you could make this all affirmations. It could be words. It could be, um, very symbolic. It could be, um, you know, flowers, triangles. There's so many different ways that we use to symbolically represent the womb, can perhaps make like some kind of a goddess um, but you know feel feel free to try and um, really push yourself on your your um, idea of how you want this to be and maybe you know think about the full plan of how you want each you know gateway to be represented or just work on them one at a time that's kind of what I'm doing is um, I'm okay with having a very colorful um, and projects so I'm okay with it being very different very interesting and I plan on um, in that sense um, really trying to find um, w just let myself be wild and expressive when it comes to seeing what I can do with this so I do want to make a, a womb though a very kind of obvious womb um so I'm still not quite sure how I'm going to be doing that but um I did write down some notes to talk with everybody about just to finish off this sister circle so um because the nature of the project has us combining the squares at the end um to make the item of our choice the quilt the shawl the scarf etc it's most important at this time for you to decide on the size of each square um, so that it will be uniform across the board. Um, and so I think that will be easier if you're just going to start with like a blank square and applique things on top, but it will be uh, something that will require a little more math perhaps if you're doing a patchwork type of deal. Um, so the size is up to you, but I do suggest doing it on like the medium to even maybe even a larger size, just because, um, it can be first off so that it can add up and it will cover up an entire quilt or cover up an entire, um, jacket or cover up a, a scarf, but also, um, for the sake of your own, you know, use, it, it can be harder to make miniature things in my experience. Um, it might be easier to keep it, you know, the pieces on a, on a larger scale in that sense. Not too large, obviously, but uh, not like miniature type things. Um, so I suggest anywhere from six to even nine or ten inches, depending on what your project is. Um, so for myself, I was thinking I would probably make the smaller patches and put them onto a pre-made item shawl jacket haven't decided yet haven't you know even shopped for something like that or looked at a pattern to make myself one of those yet I plan I, I'm really just concentrating on the squares and making squares at this time so um let's see um your materials you need I'm suggesting you get those some hand sewing needles um I would suggest getting ones just be if you're if you're you know newer to this not too long um maybe like two three inches and get the the you know as big of an eyelet as you can get yourself a needle threader um get yourself the tools to, to succeed also a thimble I like I've uh, recently discovered cloth thimbles leather which I found on Etsy and for very cheap 
and they were mad comfortable. It works really well for me for quilting, um, but you can also just get a, you know, a metal thimble, I'm sure it would still work just fine, but I was just, you know, they were, I think it's more comfortable than the metal one, to be frank. Um, so get sharp scissors that are only for your fabric so they don't get gunk on them from anything else. They'll be nice and, um, you know, ready and sharp. They don't get dulled from anything else, messed up from anything else. So you can also get a rotary cutter, right? There are different, um, things to use fabric wise. Once you start getting into it, there's, there's no end of tools you can start picking up for sewing. Um, Get an embroidery hoop if you're hand sewing. I find that to be very helpful to be able to have something that can pull it all tight and I can sew on that one item. Uh, nothing like an embroidery hoop. I found one on Amazon that gave me three different sizes for pretty cheap. I'm going to go ahead and, you know, try and link all that stuff up for you. Um, be, um, so then we have the fabric is the next portion again you can go ahead and buy you know a couple yards of a bunch of different ones and only use those for the year and you know that's the color scheme you want for your quilts that sounds really awesome um but then there's also the issue of um what am i saying you know there's the issue of of price right and then also you can our ancestors kind of used what they had so if you're really trying to challenge yourself you might just use items you already have in your home maybe old baby clothes old ratty clothes of yours or your spouses um, you know just um, maybe go thrifting to find some interesting fabrics to utilize um, yeah use use your imagination go wild but I would advise you to be careful with stretch fabrics just because they can kind of pull out of place and, you know, they need to be kind of cut in certain directions or else they're even easier to pull out of place. Um, so, you know, that might be a little more advanced if you're not used to working with fabrics. I would just stick with your basic cotton um, batiks or Ankara fabrics are all made typically in that type of um you know, non-stretch cotton fabric. A lot of clothes are too, um, but you just have to be careful. Um, you know, just just be careful. Whatever it is you do, that's all I'm going to say. With the stretch, take um, extra care with stretch fabric. Um, you definitely need some pen and paper to plan it all out. You can, of course, use the um, the um, the, the 2020 Spiritual Planner, RitualReady.com. You can also um, you know, it's good because you can then jot down ideas for future months as well as, um, you know, j jot down the schedule, which is on patreon.com slash Sankofa Shrine. So you can definitely check that out as well. I have all of the months planned up there. Um, an iron can press those seams and the squares, keep everything flat and what, you know, um, together and looking really nice. Um, I, I always feel like an iron is necessary. Finally, the seam ripper. Um, you can also use scissors, but a seam ripper definitely helps get that done a lot quicker. And I already mentioned the thimble, but I'll go ahead and mention that again if you're hand sewing. Um, so yeah, for each um, square, it's useful if you're going to think about if you're going to do those nine patch, if you're going to do applique. Um, which is just sewing fabric on top of fabric, right? Layering on to the top of that. Um, that's what I've grown comfortable with, but so far as I've noted in a lot of books and videos I've watched, not a lot of people really like that method. Um, you can find your own patterns online. Um, you know, a lot of people make patterns, quilt square patterns, and they'll sell them. So you could perhaps use somebody else's pattern if that's what you feel more comfortable with. Um, just make the project your own, whatever you do. The Sanab Freedom Project is supposed to express your journey. It's supposed to express your inner spiritual um, power and um, display, you know, your determination, your discipline, your willingness to learn and grow. Um, and it's suggested you use the traditional, um, you know, the black quilting tradition, but it's like you don't have to. You, you can use any artistic medium you want. Make, make GIFs, make videos, make a movie, you know. I don't know, I don't know where I was before he interrupted me. Where was I? 
<laughs> I don't know. So I put down some other suggestions here. Oh, I was saying like make a movie, make um. Let's see, I have a embro um embroidering, quotes, painting, pottery, other forms of digital art, dioramas. Um, different things can be used to commemorate your journey. Feel free to get as creative as you would like using whatever medium, new, old, what have you, that you have access to and would like to express yourself through because we do need more black women expressing themselves in these spiritual ways, um, in these ways that inspire others when they stumble across them. Um, and so, you know, find those ways, find that way to express yourself, make, make a tarot card for each gateway. You know what I'm saying? Um, enjoy yourself, uh, really find a way to, um, express yourself. So finally, I want to end off this, um, reading, uh, or this sister circle with a reading, an excerpt from a book that I have, um, over here, which I have. I believe pointed out to you all before. Um, it is My Quilts and Me by Nora Izell, who was one of our, um, wait, why can't I, is this? Okay, it's just gonna be backwards, y'all. But anyways, she, she is one of our, our quilting, um, masters and ancestor now an american quilter um and we're going to be reading um an excerpt i pulled out from page actually here let me just since i happen to be in the i put i typed it all out on my thing because i was like i don't know if i'm gonna have the book on me and then i happen to just have the book on me today so she has a little por portion called making blocks in this book which um and this is like kind of her journal she just does so it's just it's such a this is such a wealth of information and um i enjoyed it so thoroughly oh here's a picture of nora i can't see her for anything i'm so sorry we're not in, i'm not in the place to be doing these pictures so um she says, how many times have I been asked, what is the secret of making a pretty quilt? First, do a pretty block, square, row, or whatever you're going to make. Well, you might say, what makes a pretty block? You can make a quilt about anything or anyone. I like houses, churches, pictures of plants or buildings. I try to use colors that express what I'm trying to make, and I always choose colors I like. I look for colors that show my quilt ideas to the very best. The way you put it together makes a big difference. Choose a fabric suitable for your quilt. Cut your pieces as straight as you can. Sew your seams neat and straight with very small stitches. Keep all edges very even. Make all corners match. Nothing looks worse than some seams that are going one way and the others going another way. It certainly requires a lot of measuring. Of course, in the beginning, this was not so. We, bless our hearts, didn't know about that. We tried just to make something to keep us warm. Now we do it for a variety of reasons. Don't you just love her tone of voice? And it's just like little pieces of advice. I have bought so many books and I still buy them every once in a while. I never cut them up. I buy templates and I make my own patterns for traditional quilts. I never make patterns for originals as I would never do two of them. I do not sell or give away my original patterns. Maybe this is unusual, but I just don't like to do it. A lot of people are trying to get into quilt making on the machine. If you want to, your best bet is to do something simple, like nine patch, double iris chain, and a few others. The first and only quilt I have made on the machine is the Arkansas Tulip. I used double knit because I found the knit stretch just right around corners and curves. Tulips are very bright, so I used bright colors to bring my idea out. I tried to make the blocks and stripping very straight. This is a, another quilt that makes a good conversation piece. Uh, this is another quilt that makes a good conversation piece that shows. I wouldn't suggest you begin machine quilting with the Arkansas tulip pattern unless you are like me, experienced. I don't try to be perfect, but I have to excel. I never could satisfy myself by doing something simple. Another thing, I never practice. 
When I start out to learn something, I have to make something. I had a friend that rode the same bus with me each morning. She was trying to learn to crochet and she made a chain about five miles long. The last time I saw her, she had not learned to make anything but that chain. So I say, if you want to learn to make a quilt, make a block. Put it together with other blocks. Quilt it. When you do enough blocks, you can put them together and make your first quilt. And um, so that was, that's just the little excerpt that I wanted to um, share with you all. Um, so these are some of her, this is like a little applique fish that she put on um, a calendar quilt for her husband. And um, yeah, just, you know, I love her matter of fact tone about making the project. Just do it. Just make it. You know, in the beginning, it's not going to be the most beautiful thing you've ever seen, um, but it's going to have its purpose. And as you practice, you'll get better or, you know, um, throughout the year, I think that each square, probably by the end of the year, we're, our squares are going to be looking pretty magnificent. Um, but this is just a very beautiful project. So I wanted to share some words of wisdom from a quilting elder in our community. All right. So um, that is the... Um, oh, and then she also said... Um, how did I miss this part? Did I say the popular sampler quilt is good to use all your blocks at the end? This is also known as the friendship quilt. Um, so, you know, you at the very end of the year, you if you have all of your quilts, uh, if you have a leftover quilt square from each quilt you make, you know, you can put them all together to make like a sampler quilt of all of these different squares. So it's almost kind of like what we're doing now uh, is, and you can also exchange with other people, which I think is a beautiful thing. She's talking about the friendship quilt. Um, so she talks about it as well. Queen talked about it. She talks about it. I know that's something we need to do. So at any rate, um, next time we meet, I'm going to have a square a little bit of a square to show you for the sacred womb and we'll be able to talk a another time about gateway two or we're sorry gateway one we are in gateway zero we're about to go to gateway one next month with the square so enjoy i'm so excited to see your um your squares or your projects and feel free to tag me on um, sacred sister circle to show me uh, on Instagram to show me the um, different projects you make and also um, you know yeah I would love to just see them and perhaps share them with other people as well encourage others to get started on this project as well that'd be so fun all right so until next time may your ancestors and spirit guides be with you at every crossroads <laughs>